Go ahead. Um, I didn't have anything to say yet. But what is a woman? A person. No, but what is the definition of what is a woman? I don't know. I'm confused now. You already know what it is. It's your boy laid back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, TikTok, you up to bat. It's your boy laid back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we got to do. You got to hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Elevate more 2024. Elevate more 2024. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. We back with another reaction. Like I said, elevate more 2024. Make sure you drop that in the comments. The merch will be here shortly. It's already available under the video. But mine ain't gonna come in until probably a week or so. So it's fine. But anyway, I think this video right here is probably gonna have the most comments under it out of all my TikTok reactions, man. Because the subjects they're gonna be talking about today, gender, that's all I'm gonna say. Buckle up. I need the women front and center. I need the men front and center. I need to know what you guys think about these topics here. Also, like I said, man, I got a playlist of TikTok reactions. If you want to go through and binge watch them and catch up with all of the crazy stuff we've been looking at over here, make sure you check it out. And if you make it to the end of this one here, you a real one for real. Let's go ahead and get it. Fire Squad, what's popping? Let's get it. And this is why it's so interesting, because when I when I read the New Testament myself and I obviously not a believer in the divinity of Jesus. But when I see what Jesus actually has to say about the Old Testament, it seems to me very similar to the stuff that Zechariah is saying or that Jeremiah is saying. Sure. Right? Jeremiah says that the, the sacrifices themselves are basically of no use unless there's actual meaning behind the sacrifices. God wasn't there because he likes the barbecue. right? It actually has to have some meaning. And when Jesus comes along and he says, you're focusing in on all the details of the Sabbath without actually recognizing the rationale for the Sabbath. And then he exaggerates it beyond the point. It's, it's interesting. Without loving actually, God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Right, exactly. And then he, even to make a point, exaggerates it beyond the scope of what Jewish law would permit. So, for example, when he says, you're going to leave a guy to die in a ditch on the Sabbath, that's against Jewish law. You can't do that. You have to violate the Sabbath in order to save a life. This is like basic mm. black-letter Jewish law. But he's making a point, which is, you guys are ignoring what's important in order to focus in on the mundane aspect of of practice like that is that's not unique to jesus in other words there's a there's a long prophetic tradition of people saying exactly that and in the modern jewish world it's called musr it's basically just telling people what they should understand about the values beyond the beyond the black letter law and this is why i think it's, it's fascinating to me when i talk with people who are real biblical scholars in the in, from the christian side that all the era a lot no, i won't say all a lot of the areas where Christian scholars think that Christianity has departed dramatically from Judaism, I think are not really dramatic departures. They seem to be reflections of Judaism from a slightly different angle. Mm. Even so far as a lot of the stuff in the Sermon on the Mount about, you know, love when, when it says that you're supposed to uh, love thy brother as thyself and, and you're supposed to, um, and, and you're supposed to uh, treat your brother as you would wish to be treated and all, sure. all of this. He's I mean, stumbling. The, that's that's present in the Old Testament, too. No, right? I, I think what Jesus did in the Sermon on the Mount was elevate the teaching of the rabbis. Elevate it. He went b above them. He, he said, um, well, you, you've been told you shouldn't commit adultery. I'm telling you, if you look at a woman to lust after her, you've committed Ooh. adultery in your heart. He Ooh. got to the heart of the law. Uh, th they were content with the, the practical application of the right. law. Right. He was not content with that. Right. So I, I, I would say that Jesus was the purest Jew that ever lived <laughs> mm. because he understood the, the, the elevation of the law to the heart and the soul. Um, it, would be a, it would be a monstrous responsibility for some committee to have invented Jesus. Uh, the, you know, when you hear the, even the people in his time saying, never a man spoke like <laughs> this man, that he is a person that doesn't seem to have been a product of human invention. And you could say, well, Jesus is a good teacher, but good teachers don't claim to be God. They don't say, I and God are one. Mm -hmm. They don't say, I created the universe. That, that's not a good teacher. That's somebody who's crazy, as a lunatic, or somebody who's trying to pull off a huge deception. So you, you, you 
cannot come to Jesus and just patronize him as a noble, good Jewish teacher because he crossed a line. He crossed a severe line, and the Jews saw that. Either he's the Messiah or he is a blasphemer, Mm -hmm. and he needs to be put to death. Mm -hmm. And those are really the choices you have. So when you ask me to show the the variation between Judaism and Christianity, morally, no, there's none. And in terms of God, the same, we don't have the same God as Muslims. Allah is not the same God as Jehovah. We don't have the same gods as any other false religion. But we have the same God as Jews and Christians. He is the one true creator God, the one true living God. He has a seity. That is, he is eternal by his own nature. He is uncreated, the uncreated one. We believe he is He is more than one person in one God. That's why Genesis says, let us make man in our own image. And relationship comes from a God who has relationship within himself. But the distinction between Christianity and Judaism is what we do with Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, the writer of Hebrews says, If a sacrifice had been enough to atone for sin, they would have stopped making them. But they never stopped. Morning and evening, morning and evening, morning and evening, Mm. morning and evening. You know, basically a priest was a butcher. He had blood up to his waist. (laughs) Wow. I mean, he he, he was a butcher. He had blood up to his waist. And the frustration of it, even on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, all the bloodletting. And year after year after year after year, this goes on, this goes on, this goes on. You have this most amazing thing. You come to the death of Jesus Christ. And at the death of Christ, the veil in the temple is rent from top to bottom. The Holy of Holies is thrown open. Wow, that's a statement from God because it couldn't have been ripped by men from the top down. The way to God is open. There's no more barriers because a a suitable sacrifice has been found. This is the Lamb of God. Mm. And amazingly, soon after that, the whole sacrificial system ends Mm. because... that's the final sacrifice. And God validates that sacrifice by raising him from the dead. The resurrection is a provable historical fact. So I think that's the issue. Um, it's what do you do with Jesus? Mm. Mm. What Thoughts. is the next tallest thing we built? Stable structure after the pyramid. What? The Eiffel Tower. Really? Yes. Late 1800s in huh. Paris. The Eiffel Tower. Huh. That was the first stable structure we built as a civilization that was taller than the pyramids. So the Mm. Egyptians knew architecture. Those rocks are nowhere in the region. They found a place where those rocks were mined. And those are some big ass rocks. The the thing about the pyramids that's so impressive is the precision and the sheer numbers. Two million, six hundred thousand stones. Our best understanding of Stonehenge is that it's a functioning observatory that can actually predict eclipses. Whoa. 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 What is the percent chance that aliens have already found out about Earth and who we are? I'm not authorized to come. You are authorized. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So uh, aliens may be vastly more intelligent than we are because they figured out how to get here. Correct. And we haven't left low Earth orbit in 50 years. So mm. the question is, why would we think they would be interested in us at all? I remain unconvinced that we've been visited by aliens. We have high resolution images of the surface of Mars. We have images from the edge of the universe. Oh, and by the way, the panorama on Mars was taken by an SUV sized <laughs> rover. Let them know. We have this high resolution imagery of all these places in the universe, and the best you have is a fuzzy monochromatic tic tac. And you want to say those are visiting aliens? If that's the best you have, we have more work to do here. Do you have an Mm -hmm. opinion that there's some technologies are being kept from us just because, as a human race, we're not ready for them yet? People think, especially the government, has all these secret things and their secret capabilities. Have you ever worked for the government? (laughs) (laughs) The level of incompetence (laughs) and and the inability of anything to remain a secret. That- Yo, if you work for the government, let me know is this dude talking right? Like he said, they can't even keep a secret. Jeez. Has any tasty elements to it at all is near zero. I think about that with the moon landing. A lot of people are like, oh, it's fake. That would have leaked a long time ago. <laughs> okay, yeah. So you'd have to fake not only all the imagery in the 1960s, you'd have to fake the millions of pages of engineering diagrams for the Saturn V rocket, the warehouses in which they were stored. But here's the best that I heard about this. The government goes to 
Neil Armstrong said, Neil, we don't know how to get you to the moon, but we have to pretend we did. So what are you going to do? We're going to get some Hollywood people and we're going to stage it. In order to fake it, what we'll do is we'll shoot it on location. <laughs> shoot it on location. That's funny. We really just need teleportation. I cannot begin to tell you how game changing that would be. But it's not teleportation you're after. Yes, it is. What you really want is the power to open a wormhole anytime in any place. On Star Trek, they go into the transporters and they beam somewhere. If they had Rick's power of portal, they just open a portal, step through, and you are where you need to be. Right. You're not teleported. You just step through a wormhole. The day you can do that, there are no airports. There are no roads. Because <laughs> wherever you are, you just walk through the portal and you're there. The mm -hmm. age-old question is, if you could go back in time, you have Wi-Fi somehow, and you have a smartphone, how long would it take you to maybe take over civilization? If I carry what I know today back in time, you could easily take over the world. But first, you just know what the markets did. Within a few months, I could just become the richest person in the world. I just wonder how fast you could speed up society, just you individually. You go oh. back with all your knowledge. Oh. So you can't. I'll tell you why. Because a lot of bits and pieces have to come together, and they're mm -hmm. brought together by innovative, imaginative people. Yeah. The smartphone, for example, was not a discovery under a rock. Apple developed hardly anything that's in the smartphone. Apple did not invent GPS. They did not right. invent solid state storage. Yeah. They did not invent touch screens. Touch screens were invented at the Library of Congress by someone who wanted people to be able to tour the place and you could touch the screen and navigate maps of the Library of Congress for tourists. This dude. His intellect. I just personally crazy. come from an era where a man was a man and a woman was a woman, and it wasn't but two genders, and that's just how I rocked. Here we now, go. It, 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 you, could, you could identify as a goldfish if you feel like. Right. <laughs> I, don't I care. agree. That ain't my business. It's just, it becomes my business when you try to make me play the game with you. I'm not going right. to call you a goldfish, but exactly. you, you want to be a goldfish, you go be a goldfish. I feel like parents have almost almost forgotten what the role of a parent is. Amen. It's like, okay, lost control. if your little boy comes to you and says, Daddy, I want to be a girl, and you just let him rock with that? Just... Uh-oh. Recently in Texas, there was a boy who won the girls' wrestling state championship. Do you think that he should have been allowed to compete? I think that a man taking down a woman on a map should warrant a call to the police. He he was actually born female and forced to compete in that division despite being on they, HRT. If they want to have their own division, go for it. I, I actually would love separate, to watch it. If you are cool. opting in as a man, as a woman, to having a man take you down on a map, that is totally fine for me, but what is unacceptable is that we have people that are allowing men to compete in these women's divisions. Riley Gaines, who has spoken about how she competed against Leah Thomas and it was not fair. Leah Thomas suddenly switching your gender to compete against women is not fair. I of am course, open if to Leah losing, Thomas. You're say it's not fair. Don't ask me Ooh. a question and then cut me off when I give you the answer. It's Whoa. just obnoxious. It really oh. is. I am open to Leah Thomas and every other trans person having their own category. What I am not open to are biological men competing against women. If you don't want to acknowledge biological reality, I want you to lead the trans Olympics. I want you to be the person that establishes the trans events for people. Thank you for your question. There's more people behind you. Okay, I love wow. your solution is separate but equal. What? So we already have a, what? Your solution is separate but equal? What are you talking about? We already have men and women divisions, so is that separate but equal? Next question. Oh. I made a video defending a trans woman in my comment section saying that it doesn't matter how you dress or what you wear or what you look like. If you say you're a woman, you're a woman. Then somebody commented, quick question, then what is a woman? Mm -hmm. Delighted that you asked, let me explain. Women are beauty. Women are grace. Women are imminent doom. A woman is a swimsuit left out on the lawn after playing with the sprinkler and then being run over by the lawnmower. Women are what? the feeling of your leg hair flowing in the breeze. Lawnmowers are also women. A woman is when you walk around the corner of a building on a windy day and get smacked in the face with nature. Have you ever seen a video of a raccoon receiving a piece of cotton candy? That's a woman. Women are robust. Women are industrious. Oh, women like Ferb and Phineas. Women are gay. A woman is an orca in high tide. Women Women are not tiaras. Women are not crowns. Women are the aching hands of the metalsmith. Women are. <gasps> Women are. <gasps> Women are mauve, but never chartreuse. Some fan fictions believe that Jesus was the king of kings, 
Paul Blart was the king of queens. Queen was queen. Who was the queen of kings? Shania Twain. Do I look like Jonathan Van Ness currently? Jonathan Van Ness stunt double when? Ordering something oh online and realizing God. you already have it, that's a woman. Women are huh. Women are huh. Women are you. Yeah. I'm sweating right now and it's because of women. Women are the magazine subscription that you can't cancel. If you ever kept repeating the right answer to a question that nobody heard, you might be a woman. Women are the earth. Women are the sky. The sky is a lesbian. Women are angels. What? Women are life givers. Women are life takers. Women are everything. A woman is a eucalyptus leaf. Eucalyptus leaf. You can always <laughs> tell a woman by her big, juicy personality. Respect her. Most importantly, a woman is whatever she wants to be in her wildest nightmare. Any questions? I guess she summed it up, right? A woman is a eucalyptus. Okay, but you're still saying these kids should like, not be accepted because they don't really fit in either place? They can't just like... I'm saying that the Boy Scouts have a standard. You must be a biological boy to be a Boy Scout. You have to be a boy to be a Boy Scout. That's written, though. Okay. In the name Boy Scouts. <laughs> left is militating against the, oh, the okay. advent of science. One of those areas is, is the area of transgenderism. Uh, the, the argument that is typically made by gender theorists is that gender is entirely separate from sex. Uh, you, you've seen the argument made that it makes no difference on average if men are stronger than women are, and that if we were to allow transgender women to compete with non-transgender women, then this would somehow not disadvantage biological women. And this seems to me absolutely scientific. that if we're actually going to have a discussion about gender and sex, that that should be based in data, which suggests that mammals are, in fact, binary in terms of their sex, unless you have intersex birth defects, typically, or genetic defects. I'm happy to opine on this. Um, this only matters. That man said a word I ain't never heard before. I'm happy to opine on this. What the hell does that mean? In the comments, who knows what opine mean? I'm sure I can use the context clues, but opine? Because today, we segregate most, nearly all sports by gender. Otherwise, why do we even give a shit? <laughs> What's what someone identifies with? So if this is, we live in a free country and with consenting adults and people free expression of who and what they are. Yeah, I don't love I agree with you. I mean, it doesn't matter what you That's what I'm saying. And, and so there's the, there's the, the, the matrix of, of, you know, what you are biologically, how you express yourself, who you choose as a sexual partner. If we actually live in a free country, as we tell ourselves, people's freedom to behave in any of those ways should not concern you at all. Nor are they requiring that you behave that way. Right. Okay? Well, this is for their own right. freedoms, because well, we right. live in a free country. Now, right. what is unresolved here is, what do you do with sports? It's mm. unresolved. And I've followed that closely, and I don't see any... I don't. See what do y'all think about sports? What should be done in the sports category? Let me know in the comments. I will read through those. Everybody let me know. See any meaningful solutions to come down off of that. Um, I don't know if y'all seen too. Sorry to keep cutting this off. But even boxing is letting like the transgender women box, you know, I guess they call them biological women. So that was a big thing at the beginning of the year. Like they was talking about that. So just let me know y'all comments down below. We know that hormones manifest differently in different people and have, this whole thing with steroids, steroids are hormones, right? And we rallied against steroids in professional sports because it gives you an undue advantage. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd have tried to think of what the future of sports would be in the world of a gender spectrum. And it may be, you don't specify whether it's a male or female sport, you just take measurements of what your hormonal balances are. And so you compete based on your hormone. <laughs> this is fun I had, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't uh, know where it's gonna land. The, but the WNBA won't be in business for very long if, <laughs> if that's the case. It would just be, uh, you'd, have to, you'd have to find some way to compete people against each other if you still care that sports is an interesting activity. I guess the, the area where it does come up in, in a non-sports area. Yeah, tell me, uh, I don't know. So it would be, you, you talk in your book about the education of children and teaching children about science. And right yes. now, children are being taught about the quote unquote gender spectrum, which is not scientifically based. That is a, that is a theory based idea. No, wait, 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 hold on. People express themselves on a spectrum. So you learn that. That's, I, I don't that's, that, that, that's, that's a social, that's yeah, a social sure. point, it, not a scientific point. It's, it's, Meaning we, we express ourselves hold on, hold on, hold on. In, based in different languages. Is that something you teach in science class or is that something that you teach when you're teaching language? Um, so mm. whether the fact 
that people want to express themselves on a spectrum, on a gender spectrum, whether that fact is something you want to put in a sociology class or in a science class, maybe that remains to be determined. But it is a real fact about real society. Well, of course, nobody's denying that people identify how they want to identify. So, so, so the question I, is, what I, is the relationship of that to biology? Meaning that I, what, the argument is made that trans women are women, for example. And what that seems to mean is that trans women are identical to women. Now, if people want to say trans women are not biological women, obviously that is the case. But people don't seem to want to say that, although that is obviously scientifically true. Trans women are not biological women. Biological women are biological women. But where are you going with this? What, 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 is your, what, is your, what are you trying to accomplish by asking yourself, is it science or is it not science? It's how it's but, people in society. But, but, but this, is, this is a perfect example of an area where suddenly it doesn't matter to say things that are just true. Like, why is it, why is it bad or wrong? To uh, point uh, out? I have another way to, to approach this. Um, I care what is objectively true in the world as a scientist. Um, but let me not say even as a scientist. I just simply care what is objectively true. And science happens to be a pretty potent path to invoke, to find out what is true. Mm -hmm. And so if people express themselves on a gender spectrum and that is an actual thing in an actual society, if we have not fully explained that scientifically, that's an interesting frontier to study. If you want to say it's only sociological, then it's the purview of the social sciences. I don't care who studies it. It's mm -hmm. an interesting fact about society that's worth learning about. If to, to make it to fight someone to say it's not biological, it's just your this. It's, it's real and it's there. Well, because it's real because it manifests. What is a woman? Mm. Oh. A woman is somebody who presents as our social conception of womanhood. Can you answer that question without using the word woman or womanhood? It's because basically it would be a functional definition. So as a society, we have an understanding of what woman is. What it's is that? Man. Yeah, that's basically. I am a man. <laughs> XY chromosomes. You can't give me a definition without using the word woman. Can you give me any sort of biological definition of what a woman is? It's a person who performs a set of social roles that are typically associated with, um, with feminine characteristics. Do you think anyone can become a woman? Yep. Okay, so then at what point do wow. they become a woman? It will depend on where they are in their gender transition for the does most it, part. Does it require drugs to become a woman? No. Personally, I think it's a mindset. It's a it's a spiritual oh. energy. It's it's the vibe that you give off, you know, like I, I'm a woman. Hold on, man. <laughs> Hold on. This is going to be extremely interesting. It's a vibe you give off to be a woman. Really? Let me just listen, man. Y'all, I told you this this video probably going to have a million comments. That's, yeah. a, that's the best answer. I mean, periodically. What is she? Someone who's born with a womb. I missed it. But that's yeah. a, that's the, what point do they become a woman? It will depend on where they are in their gender transition for the does most it, part. Does it require drugs to become a woman? No. Personally, I think it's a mindset. It's a it's a spiritual oh. energy. It's it's the vibe that you give off. You know, like I, I'm a woman. That's, yeah. a, that's the best answer. I mean, periodically, it's someone who's born with a womb, but this generation obviously has proven that people, men, can turn into women. I think what constitutes as a woman is the energy that you give off and that you want to put out into the world. Hmm. How, can, how can we debate feminism if we can't agree what a woman is? Mm. Oh. You don't even know what a woman is. You don't know what a woman is. You don't know what a woman is. I'm a female. I have a fucking vagina. I'll admit it. You don't have to swear? Are you talking about Jesus? Come on, man. Cut it out. You don't have to swear. No, no. You're the one who doesn't know what a woman is, and you're screaming at the preacher. Okay? You have to have respect for the preacher. Okay? Okay. Pardon? You called me uneducated. You well, I mean, you, you guys didn't know what a woman is. You didn't put up your hand. I just gave you the answer. So you what's a woman? Tell me a woman. A what's, woman what's... is someone that wants to identify as a woman. You uh, can't. It's a woman. Being a woman being a male. Wrong answer. Wrong answer. A wrong answer. It's not a social construct. There is no hope. That There's is uneducated. No so you're telling me, you're telling, you're telling me any, any man here can, can say they're a woman just because they say so? 
Oh, well, you're not going to bring Jesus and swearing and, and dressing like you're not going to do it. <laughs> not on my mic. And that is un uneducated. And I'm not going to respect that information. It is disinformation against the word of God. It's disinformation against women. It's actually disrespectful to women to say that anyone can identify as a woman. That's dismissing women from sports, dismissing women from society. And I will I'm not right. tolerate disrespect to the women in my life, to my mother, to my sisters. They deserve dignity and they deserve, deserve value. I'm not going to listen to somebody tell me any man, any person can identify as a woman and that makes it a woman. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Amen. There's one lady and all these young people that gave hope to this generation and that means I'm preaching for a reason, even if it's to one Amen. person. But you see, you see what happens when people walk by, they look at, oh, this Jesus stuff, crazy stuff, not realizing that the world is crazy. The only thing that's sane is the words of God the only thing that makes sense because right from the beginning of the book it says God made them male and female to be fruitful and multiply he gave man a purpose woman a purpose and this is what propagates protects and preserves families and when you can preserve a family you can preserve a community and when you can preserve a community you can preserve a nation I agree with that but when you deny things at the very root when you deny what a man is and a female is at the root, you can never have family. That's why two men can never have a child. You can't have family. That means you can't protect a family if you can't have a family. So what they do, they try to make up a new definition of the family. They change the definitions of marriage. This happened in 2009. Some of you just you may, may not have been born yet. Or, or actually, most of you have been born. They changed the definition of marriage. They changed the definition of family. It used to be a man and a woman and children together. Now it could be anything. You can call a community a family and everything. They want to confuse you so that you lose your purpose. There's no protection for the family. There's no preservation for the family. And there's no propagation. Mm. Let's go. Okay, can someone help me out with this? Because I'm confused. I am a woman. I identify as a woman. I feel comfortable in being a woman. But like... What the Beep. fuck is a woman? Like if someone asked me, what does being a woman mean to you? I, I wouldn't have an answer. Don't even try to tell me that, well, being a woman is being empathetic and kind and compassionate because that could be anybody. Anybody could be those things. Don't even bother being transphobic in my comments saying that, oh, well, being a woman is having a uterus and having kids because no, uh, no. Don't even bother saying that being a woman means having biddies and having a vagine because no, also no, wrong. So I'll ask the question again. What is a woman? Like, I feel so comfortable identifying as a woman, but is that only because that's just what I've always been? That's what people always told me that I was, so I just went with it. And the thing that's frustrating with this question is that everyone's answer is always, well, it depends on the person. And I get that, I know, but I'm trying to figure it out for myself. And I don't know. And I mean, I'm a gender abolitionist, so like, abolish gender, you know? But some people feel very validated in their labels and in their gender. So I'm strictly speaking for myself. I don't know what being a woman means to me. Anyone else? Wow. Wow. Answer. Um, right, so this dichotomy is a false dichotomy that isn't supported by any of the medical associations that I just named then off. Then let me None explain. None of the medical then associations that I just named off would actually support the uh, idea that um, gender is biological. This is something that's completely untrue okay, within gender... every single like medical consensus. Uh, well then, I will just say that anyone who suggests that gender has no reference whatsoever to biology, it's not connected in any way to biology, is just full of shit. Because if, if, if the and, and the reason I... Whoa. And and the re and the reason that I then say you, it, then you then you class it then you actually just disagree with medical consensus. Yes, within the I disagree. Western yes, I disagree with the false medical consensus driven by politically driven quote unquote doctors. If any doctor denies to me that there is a dichotomy between male and female, a sexual dichotomy between male and female, they are ignorant and they are letting their politics get in the way of their science. Anybody who suggests to you that there is such a thing, for example, as a pregnant male, is not a doctor; they are an activist. This is interesting. I'm very glad that none of these opinions are actually accepted in academia and haven't been for over 70 years. Sent this here on oh, well, Twitter. Okay, so the notion that they haven't been accepted for over 70 years is a bizarre one considering they were accepted until about five minutes ago. And the basic idea that male and female do not exist runs counter to all mammalian biology, all of it, not just human. Are we to suggest that gender and, and sex are different in walruses? How does this work exactly? 
like on, uh, are they different in bears? Anytime you have a, anytime you have all mammalian reproduction is rooted in the idea that there's a sexual dichotomy between male and female. To obscure that with all sorts of semantic war games about how you feel subjectively has no bearing on whether male and female are categories that exist. And if you're trying to define male and female with reference to any subjective category that cannot be identified by any metric whatsoever other than how you feel today, mm. I challenge whether that is scientific or whether that is merely a self-perception that is being guided by a political agenda. I'm sorry, I can spend more time on this, but we have to get to the next question. I appreciate it. Boy. Women are meant to guide men, and this has been expressed in spirituality for thousands of years. In ancient esotericism, masculine and feminine energy come together to create all planes of existence, including the ones that transcend the physical plane. The feminine energy is the chaos, the spiritual, the unknown, the heart, the dream, while the masculine energy is the order, the logic, the will, the force that drives those abstract dreams to reality. So for a balanced society, both men and women Men are meant to rule together with the woman guiding the man's decision. This is because although everybody has masculine and feminine energy in them, the female body was made in the image of feminine energy, so it will naturally have more than a man. That's why women are portals between the spiritual and the physical and can give birth, and the male body was made in the image of masculine energy. If a person has an equal amount of feminine and masculine energy, they are in balance. Male and female bodies are made to retain more energy of that which they were created after. In the world, you will see war, in poverty because the masculine has been ruling alone for a very long time, which causes greed, narcissism, and ego-driven decisions. But if women were to rule alone, they would be stuck with a dream that never comes to fruition because the feminine alone is chaos with no order. That's also an imbalanced society. If we want to create a balanced society, we must first understand how our reality works and how to use these energies to our advantage as a civilization. I'm Ira and I hope you align with your highest potential through ancient esotericism. Mm. Come together, balance. I can assure you that my four-year-old and my two-year-old daughters will not change in front of biological men. This is ridiculous. I don't care what party you are a part of. If you think that we are all equal and the same biologically, you've literally lost your mind. Oh. When my two daughters work hard in the sport, work hard in their craft to be the best that they can be amongst other women, they will compete against other women. I owe Victoria and Olivia and every other young lady in this country that. If you think I'm wrong, I am not the problem. I can assure Ooh. you, we have an opportunity in this country to get this right in 2024 so we can stop all of this foolishness. <laughs> He ain't playing. He's Since religious. we're talking about religion really quick. Okay, you have a cross necklace, but then your shirt says, Made in Hell. Can, yes, it can does. You, what? I'm a little confused. Ironic. Can you... So, I mean, the, I'm a little confused. The stone is red, so it matched, you know. But why are you the, wearing a cross you on your neck? Are color coordinating with your neck? Because I don't see a cross as religious, so... Okay. I'm just like, you don't see a marriage as religious. So, 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 I don't think don't, that a marriage... Don't have a meaning, which is why it's like, people are at a stage and people are like, what is a woman? Because they just go, well, we're going to oh. call it a marriage, but we're going to sleep with other people. We're going to bring in prostitutes. Ooh. We're going to outsource raising the kids where we're never going to have kids. You're calling it a family. It's not a family. And this is what yeah. it is. They just, the words have no meaning, right? I'm wearing the cross. Why? I don't know. I don't, I don't think of it as religious. Okay. Well, Jesus Christ died on the cross. You think that. That's what you think. Wait, it's that's been what proven. you think. So why are you proven. wearing the cross? Sex because I think it's cute. Yeah. I know that the design wait, is cute. Yeah. Better uh, wait, 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 really quick. I grew up Hold Catholic. I was religious, and I'm not anymore. I don't have to believe in what you believe. And I can say that if I didn't say you had to believe. I asked you a question. But I you're said, why are you me, wearing the cross? Okay, and you're saying that the, relig the religious aspect of marriage is the only thing that matters. It's not, because people don't follow what you believe. Yeah. Okay, I asked you why you're wearing the cross, and you said because you thought it was cute. Yeah, I'm and glad we got an answer. She's wearing the cross around her neck because she thinks it's cute. I do. Would you I'm not religious. also wear like a star of David? It's cute. As, well, like, because if it was cute, would you wear <laughs> well, okay. well, it? I just I mean like I'm asking that because, yeah, because I wonder. Well, like I my have, guess is that you would think that you, maybe you wouldn't wear a star of David because you're like, oh, this is maybe like disrespectful to people who are. Are you making Jewish. the argument? Maybe I mean. No, I'm. I'm. I'm just the secular. It's a very, it's a very here, good question. I, I, I'm just saying. Devil's advocate here. Secular argument. You, someone might just say that the cross is just maybe. It maybe it's more aesthetically. Pleasing. Pleasing even for an atheist? I don't know. Sure, but liberals okay. are all about Look, like having respect like and tolerance. Like so I'm cute. just 
like wondering if you I'm think asking, it's if you, wore, if you wear a yarmulke this yeah, yeah, I think those are very oh, different are you talking things. like blasphemy yeah, I'm saying I'm, from the y- I'm, yarmulke I'm just I mean asking, I was raised Catholic and I, that's just would not you something wear that a I believe anymore if you thought it was cute no I wouldn't wear, I mean a yarmulke is completely different than no, a cross that's been not, adapted you can buy a cross like necklace re- anywhere whoa whoa it's time for a conversation on gender disappointment in pregnancy that I think a lot of you need to hear so that we can stop shaming moms for it let's understand it say you find out that you're pregnant for some women, the second they find out, they're like, oh my gosh, it's it's a boy. I know it's a boy or it's a girl. I know it's a girl. And you take that and you run with it. You lay awake every night. You spend every day imagining the child that you decided that you're having. Say it's a mm, girl. That you decided you that you're picture having. her. You picture what she's going to look like. Your relationship with her. You imagine raising her in graphic detail as you lay awake at night. The hobbies she'll pursue. Uh, the family vacations you'll go on together, the bond that you're going to have. This child is so real to you. It feels so, so real. Say then you turn around and you find out it's a boy. After 10 weeks of imagining this child that felt so real to you in your heart, you felt like this was the child you were carrying and going to have in your family. You find out that child's not real. You're having the opposite gender. That's feels like a loss you feel like you lost the child that you thought you were having that you already have a bond with mm. and then it feels like you have this stranger that you're carrying because that's what? not the child that's not that's not my baby like i i knew my baby i already was thinking about it like wow. i already knew Let it might listen. sound crazy if you haven't experienced it but it's very real hormones okay. are so high during pregnancy emotions are so high mm-hmm. this is so real to so many people you will be a fantastic parent regardless of the gender disappointment you feel right. you will love that baby to, to the end of the earth. Right. This has no reflection of your parenting. Right. However, the judgy comments that don't get it, just say you don't get it. Karen saying, I had three babies. I never felt like this. I just wanted them healthy. Everyone wants their baby healthy. That's not what anyone's saying. But these mm. emotions are real. Don't I trivialize them. Don't shame someone for them. This is I okay agree. to feel this way. You're not alone. This happens and it's so common. Also, lastly, if you have a friend that's experiencing this, the worst thing you can say is, well, you knew there was a 50-50 chance. Why are you? Shut up. Shut up. Okay. There's a woman. Comments. What is a, that's a stupid question, dude. That's a dumb question. What is a woman? It's not mad. a trick question. What is a woman? You can't answer the question with the question. Yeah, define the woman without saying woman. You're in college, paying for an education. What oh. is a woman? How about you talk to someone with media training? Not, how about you talk to someone with You don't need media training. It's not a trick. Well, yeah, what is a woman? You can't answer the question with the... It's the college kids of America going hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt who think it's a trick question wow. when you ask them what a woman is. Wow. Wow. My mother told me. She said, you never hit a man where he's weak. Never. It could be true, it could be real, but you don't hit him where he's weak because it'll turn around on you. You can get him to do what you need him to do, but you never hit a man where he's weak because they never forget it. It lives with them. Her mom was right. (laughs) What is a woman? A woman is anyone who wants to identify as one. Does anyone else want to, I mean, what is a woman? It's what they identify as. That's a circular, you cannot, a cat is a cat because they are a cat. That's not like, this isn't a gotcha, it's just a genuine question. Hold on, let's, hold on, go ahead. Um, I didn't have anything to say yet. But, what is a woman? A person. No, but what is the definition of, what is a woman? So just an example of how things uh, have become heated at the University oh, of Toronto, man. that scene showing different groups of students, some confronting the professor about his position, others supporting him. Now, Peterson says this is about free speech, but A.W. Pete is also a professor at the University of Toronto who says that Peterson's language Peterson. is abusive. Oh joining us right now is Professor Jordan Peterson, as well as Professor A.W. Pete. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks. Uh, Professor Peterson, let's begin with you. Uh, why are you against the use of alternate pronouns? I'm, not, I'm against the use of, of le- legislation to determine what words are, 
that myself and other people are required to utter. Mm. But would you use Very alternate different. pronouns if a student asked you to? I think I've made my position on that clear already. Well, perhaps not mm. to our audience at home who are just being introduced to this. Would you use alternate no. pronouns? And why not? I, because I don't believe that other people have the right to determine what language I use, especially when it's backed by punitive legislation. And when the words that are being required are the constructions, there are artificial constructions of people I regard as radical ideologues whose viewpoint oh, I do not share. Well, I, we have a graphic to show our audience at home, uh, just some of the pronouns uh, being used or asked to be used as alternates. Among them you see here, uh, Z or Zim, uh, Z or here, Z or Zir, also hey, uh, or a rather, and per. So just some of the alternate pronouns there. Uh, Professor Pete, when you hear Professor Peterson saying that this is oppressive, how do you respond to that? Um, well, uh the Peterson drama has done real harm to real people on campus. He's made it wow. harder to be transgender or non-binary. Um, I know this from personal experience. I'm non-binary and transgender, and I know how it's felt to be on the UFT campus for the last month. And I also know from uh, private communications with other affected people. Um, you know, wow. in New Zealand where I grew up, uh, academics have a statutory role enshrined in the Education Act to be a critic and conscience of society. So I think that's a, an idea worth exporting to Canada. So I'd like to give Peterson about a B plus for his critic role recently and a, an F for the conscience part. Um, a student uh, once said to me when I finally obtained tenure, now professor, that the, now that you have obtained superpowers, you must agree to use them for good for peace and justice. So I invite uh, Peterson to start doing more of that. <laughs> well, Professor Peterson, those who are asking for this al alternate use of, pro or use of rather of alternate pronouns, they are saying it boils down to respecting their human rights. How do you respond to that? I don't think it boils down to respecting their human rights. I think that it's an imposition on freedom of speech that's being implemented at a legislative level. Mm. I also think that if there was a naturally um, evolving uh, solution to the linguistic problem that's being posed by a small fraction of the transgender community that people would have already adopted it. We've never had mm. a situation with in, with in, in, in the usage of English before that required legislation to produce a transformation in the manner in which people spoke. It has a very dangerous precedent, so it's one thing to tell people what they can't say. So, for example, we have legislation um, making it illegal to do such things as deny the Holocaust. It's a completely different thing to demand that people use certain words when they're formulating their own ideas. And mm. I mean, I can get, it's also absurd. I mean, here's one ha thing that's happened that I don't believe the formulators of this legislation ever foresaw. So in New York City, for example, there are now 31 protected gender identities. And I see no reason whatsoever why each of those gender identities can't de demand the use of their own pronoun. And that uh, absurd things like that have been happening on the University of Michigan campus, for example, where students have been given permission to tell faculty members and others what pronouns they're to be addressed by. And they're multiplying rapidly out of control. So the law is bad from an ethical perspective. It's sloppily written. And Jeez. besides that, the solution that it imposes is practically untenable. That boy Jordan Peterson do not play, boy. Define woman. Go, please. It's one of you. A person who their internal no. idea of what they are is a woman. Terrible definition. Coming from a lesbian, that destroys the very concept of our sexual orientation. Just saying mm. that it's an but idea. Why? 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 Because you can't be connected and sexually attracted to somebody's brain. Oh. This concept of womanhood has become something other than the owner and the creator has defined. Now, I know I walk in delicate places as a man talking to women about womanhood. So I'm going to let God talk and y'all can get mad at him. God is not unclear about his understanding, his definition of a woman, but the culture has gotten very confused. It has gotten very unclear, and a generation of girls are being raised with a con. They're being conned in their girlhood, conned in their womanhood, leading to chaos on that side of the ledger in the culture. But there is a biblically defined definition and role of a woman. 
One of our Supreme Court justices needed help. She was asked, what is a woman? She, she said, I don't know. Wow. Well, you should know. You should know who you are and what God created you to be, why create, he created you to be that, and how you ought to function if you are that. But you hear the con, it's the same con that God speaks about in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3 when it says, and Eve was conned by the devil. Mm. Since he was deceived by the devil, the first woman got duped, got tricked by the devil. And he's been conning women ever since. Oh, you hear the con, my body, my choice. That's a con. You hear the con when you hear women decide that they don't want to be women anymore. They want to shift genders. That's because they've been conned. You, can, you find women in homes that are conned when they want there to be two husbands. They're not willing to identify and apply the biblical role. Mm. So there's a con, and it's creating chaos. Man, it was quiet in that church, boy. Yeah. What, what, what is a woman? What is a woman? It's your mama. <laughs> That's, <laughs> oh, That's right. Man. <laughs> Plain and simple. Oh, man. You that confused? Let me come and watch it. I tell you, it's your mama. <laughs> it sure ain't your daddy. That's right. Go ahead. Jesus. President Biden joining in on the conversation. Mm. Oh, we, we, didn't, we didn't know what a woman. We didn't know. What, <laughs> we, 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 we didn't know what a woman is. A woman is your mama. <laughs> That's right. Tell about Pastor. That man is past eighty, isn't he? He past eighty, right? I, I believe so. You mean to tell me you past eighty and you don't know your your mama and your wife? That's right. Is a woman. Mm. They keep trying to shove this trash on Africa. That's and right. African presidents, one by one, is standing up against it. That's right. He said, what is a woman, your mama? I'm going to be speaking about a really controversial topic. And no doubt that this is going to trigger quite a lot of people. But it's the way I see it. Women, okay. if you know that your husband or your partner is a good man, but you go questioning his every single motive and decision, and then you complain that he's not spending enough time with you. How do I say this? You go work 12 hours a day for an unappreciated boss or people who are toxic. You got to be there because your family is dependent on that work, that income. You're not just here to be out on your own just yet. And then you come home just wanting a little bit of silence, a little switch off. And sometimes you get so overstimulated, you cannot even pick up your kids. You're easily triggered because you're also pouring from an empty cup. I know mm. it's controversial. How dare I say it as a woman, but it's mm. true. Women. If you're speaking to your husband or partner and you're complaining that he doesn't spend much time with you, why don't you go and ask him how his day was? Men Ooh. suffer from just as much mental health issues as much as women. Ooh. She said, why don't you just ask? Communicate. Why don't you just ask a question? How simple is that? Oh my God. But they go unnoticed because men have never been shown or taught how to communicate their emotions effectively. Communication. So give them a break. Now let's switch it. Men, you go to work, you hang out with other people socially. You get to speak to other adults while she's there cooking, cleaning, and looking after your children. She doesn't get social adult interaction during the day. She hears screaming, tantrums, dirty diapers, and she's also overstimulated. She feels selfish taking time for herself. Even though you tell her go out, she thinks it's selfish to do so. You go to work as a holiday. And no, being at home is not the holiday. It is a full-time job. You go pay someone to do exactly what she does. Yes, that's what nannies are for. It's pretty time consuming. Instead of ignoring her at the end of the day, communicate with her. Communicate. Now both of you, you guys are watching this. Communicate with each other. Communicate. Truly, truly communicate with each other. On, because man. it's not you against her. Right. It's not who had the worst day. It's right. not a competition about who's more tired, who's overstimulated, who right. has to deal with more shit. A right. relationship is not 50-50. There is no such thing. Mm. It's 100-100. If any one of you dips below the 100%, issues are going to rise in the marriage. I said what I said. Hey, she was speaking facts. Drop in the comments, 100, 100. When a man does not feel appreciated in the area of his presence, he becomes a version of a man that he can give you and still survive. And mm. I promise you, you will not like that version.
that version of him is silent, frustrated, sharp with his words, non-communicative, because he has to become something that he can survive in. Mm. Ooh -wee. What's one thing you wish women understood about men? That we don't really care about appearances. We more so care about personality. Really? It's a big hit. Guys want a good girl overall more so than their appearance. Do men care about a woman's body count? Absolutely. The guy wants the privilege of introducing a girl and being like, wow, this is the first thing I've experienced. You don't want a girl that's been around the block a dozen times. You want to show her the way. I think that's what a guy... He said you want to show her the way. He said you want to show What her. is a man? I asked you that before. What did you tell me? I'd say a man is somebody that has principles that he believes in, things that he stands up for, a guy that takes care of his business, takes care of his friends and family, tries to stay true to his principles. That's what I'd say. And so are you a man? I'd say so, yeah. Are you becoming more manly or less manly? I think the amount of manliness I have is pretty consistent from all points of my life. Because all this stuff you're getting into is less manly. Oh, it's like you're becoming more female-like rather than male-like. I find that the least masculine people tend to be the ones that obsess over the masculinity of other people. I find Ooh. that a lot of people that have this obsessive, like, alpha, beta male Ooh. dichotomy is kind of weird. It seems like you're, they're usually the ones that are projecting most of their insecurities. Just. And so that's why you're becoming less manly? I'm not becoming less manly. I think I'm plenty manly enough for what I do. Amazing! Um... <laughs> He, oh, <laughs> that dude is hilarious. If you are a real man, you want to provide for your family. That's what men do when you have a family. Any man, when you have a concern as to how you're going to pay your bills. Mm, scary time. There is nothing worse. Mm-mm-mm. Man can relate. Man can relate. In the end, a man is not based on age. It's based on how you represent yourself. And what is your goal to get your family out of that struggle? Are you going to leave your family there? Are you going to get your family out? Are you going to make an excuse? Are you going to build it? What are you going to do? It's a choice. And you got to choose. Why? She gave you life, right? Your mother, right? She gave you life. And that was your job to give her her, her, her kingdom. This is for you, mama. Because you raised a king. And I embraced every challenge. I did it. Because it's supposed to be hardship. It's supposed to be hard. Hard is good. Mm. I don't know who told us easy is good. Mm. If a girl sleep with you on the first night, you gonna cover? Why? My point. But if she make you work for you, you more prone to keep her. What aren't you? Life is like that, bro. Everything that has value comes with hardship. Anything mm. that is too easy, it has no value. We give it more value because of the fact that it was easy. That's a weak man's cop out. I'm gonna work for everything I want. Facts. I'm gonna fight for it. 50 said, get rich and die trying, bro. That's how I believe. Get rich and die trying, bro. Because at the end of the day, you went to your potential, you chased your goals. Mm. There's nothing wrong with dying chasing your goals. Mm. I respect any broke man that pays bills. For his family, he put his family in a better position. You're not broke because you're still rich in spirit. Rich in spirit. Last time you heard that. What is a man? A man is his heart. A lying, cheating heart means a lying, cheating man. Mm -hmm. A loving, merciful heart means a loving, merciful man. Mm. A the living man heart, heart means a living man. A dead heart means a dead man. Mm. Regardless to man's title, regardless to man's wealth, rank, or position, if the heart is not great, then he cannot be great. Wee bars. You want to be a man? You want to be a real man? You think you're tough? Go say sorry to all the people you've hurt. Mm. Emotionally first. Mm. That's a man. You know what that is? A man without pride. Mm. Come on, boy. We getting to it now. <laughs> respect to men is love. Like, men don't feel loved if they don't feel respected. And your job as a woman is to make them look good. Does it look good to a guy to have his girl hugging the whole basketball team? Hugging, hugging oh. the whole rap scene? Oh. <laughs> what is a man? A man is not a man until he does everything with righteousness at its core, mm. at the top and the bottom. Pause. Just do things right. Just follow the rules and be kind. Just give a little. And giving a little has nothing to do with money. Right. 
you give a little of your time, your care, because it's the thought that counts. As soon as you think it, it's propelling into motion, manifesting itself. And when you give to others, you're not giving them anything. You're giving yourself. Mm. Mm. I don't care what any man ever tells you. The longer you make us wait for the cookie, the more we will value you after we get it. Do you understand me? Time does matter. With that being said, I want you to understand this. With that being said, if a man respects women, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how soon y'all did it. <clears throat> and if a man does not respect women, it don't matter how long you made him wait. Make sure you know how he feels about women. And there's no better way to find that out than to ask him how he feels about his mother. Mm. And the last point, Queen, don't make the mistake of so many sisters who look for men who they have something in common with, right? We both psychologists. We both watch the reality show. We both like to read. We both like the beach. Uh-uh. That's superficial. Mm. You should be looking for whether or not y'all share the same values. He like to spend money. You like to save money. Mm. You want to have a lot of children. He don't want none. Mm. You believe in a relationship with God. He don't believe in God. You believe in saving for retirement. He wants to live for today. Mm. Study a man's values and make sure you can live with what he believes in. And the last thing, I know I said three, but I'm going to give you this. You can never change a person. Mm. When you meet that man, queen, ask yourself this and be honest with yourself. Can I live with him as mm. I'll never forget somebody said there is humility and there's being too humble. And I said, what does that mean? They said, sometimes you can be so humble where you disappear in the room. Mm. You disappear in the deals. You disappear in negotiating mm. what you really deserve. Don't be so grateful and so humble that mm. this opportunity presents itself that you don't do whatever you got to do to make sure that business-wise, you don't take care of business. That's real. That is real. Psychology of love. If you love someone for their looks, it's obsession. If you love someone for their kindness, it's admiration. If you love someone for their money, it's interest. If you love someone because they love you, it's empathy. Mm. If you love someone despite their flaws, it's true acceptance. If you love someone through thick and thin, it's genuine commitment. If you love someone for their mind and intellect, it's intellectual attraction. If you love someone deeply, even when you're apart, it's emotional connection. If you love someone and prioritize their happiness over your own, it's selflessness. If you love someone for the way they make you laugh, it's humor based affection. If you love someone for the shared experiences and memories, it's nostalgia driven love. Mm. If you love someone because they understand you on a profound level, it's a deep emotional connection. If you love someone unconditionally, flaws and all, it's pure unconditional love. If you're confused, why you love this person? Mm. That was good. I'll take this. That's mine. Uh -oh. That's mine. You're not taking That's mine. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh -oh. I paid for all this crap. I paid for those. What the hell? What's her name? Hi, Tony. Tony. Rowezy. Where y'all from? Atlanta. Seattle. Hey, babe, what y'all doing out here today? I'm just shopping. Yeah, taking my girl out. Oh, this is your girl? Y'all a couple? Yeah. Just trying to spoil her. Hey, bro. Come on now, dog. Spoil? Are you? She not spoiled already? Like, how long y'all been in? About two years now. What, two years? Yeah, two years. How, how the relationship been? Very good. I've been very quite happy with her. Wow. Wow. Relationship been for you? He's very sweet. I'm enjoying my time. Sweet. What make him so like sweet? Like, cause he spoil you, like take you shopping and stuff. Or? No, it's the little things. You know, he always asks if I'm hungry, if I need any assistance, rides. Any he's assistance. there to cook at night. He he does a lot. So he basically a sweetheart, basically. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. He is. He's a lot of cute gestures. He's sweet. Cute gestures. So you trust him? Yeah, I trust him. You trust her? All the time. All the time. Give me a good reason why you trust her. If she still comes home every night when we go, she goes out. Right, right, right. Huh? Give me a good reason why you trust him. Uh, he has given me no reason not to trust him. So y'all basically in love or it's not at like the love stage yet? Like y'all in love? I'll 
say it's it's getting there. It's, it's getting, getting there. Y'all a cute couple though. Y'all y'all a cute couple. I, you know I had to stop y'all. Y'all was walking by. I had to stop yeah. Y'all a cute couple. So let me ask you a question. Uh, have y'all ever seen my videos she before? <laughs> That's cool. So basically, I asked y'all to do an interview, but really today I want to do a loyalty test with y'all. Wow. Yeah, a what do you mean? So basically, what do you how mean? I do my loyalty test? I, you know, I find couples like walking by, stop them randomly, and ask them to like switch phones for like a minute and see like if the other person texting somebody this else. This can't or something be like real. Uh, you cool with that? If you're not cool with it, we don't have to do it. Are you cool with it? I'm fine with it. You got nothing to hide? Nothing to hide. Right, right. I mean, I got nothing to hide. Uh oh. <laughs> but but what what's the but? There is no butt. Okay, so. <laughs> that dude was it. How long y'all been ride. together? On and off for a few years. Would y'all say y'all know each other pretty well? Yeah. Very well, yeah. Very well? All right, I'm going to ask her. That's the setup. I'm just going to ask her three things that she thinks that you should know about her. Okay. And we're going to see if you can answer them right. All right? All right, so what is like three things that he should know about you? Like, it could be favorite color favorite food like just something that you feel he should know about you okay my background okay what's your background i'm puerto rican and french my favorite color which is it's green okay. he's gonna say purple I'm trying to pick something that i know he's gonna know what about like favorite food what do you know that alavaca he's not gonna know um, i don't think he's gonna know all right my man so here are your three questions one what is her ethnic background it's french or puerto rican you got one you got one okay you got one what is her favorite color Purple. I, I told you. Like, wait, wait, That's wrong. Uh oh. White? <laughs> he said white. We talked about purple flowers. Yeah. Green. 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 Well, this is awkward. Last one. Let's see. You got you got two for three. Still good. Uh -oh. Okay. What's her favorite food? Penne alla vodka. Oh, he got he it. He got it. <laughs> That's he my got dog. It. That's my dog. He got it. Respect. Do you feel like I've gotten lazy and shown you love? Yes. But like, I know you love me, but oh. I think that when we first got together, you used to give me flowers all the fucking time. And now you still give me flowers a lot, but it's not as often as you used to. Mm, I can step up. If you can go back in time, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give yourself before getting in this relationship? I need to have a routine. I feel like I didn't have a routine before I met you and it made it like very easy for me to like be consumed in you and not mm. as consumed in myself. If I never mm. said I loved you again, how would you know based on my actions? Oh, that's so cute. Oh my gosh. I would know based off the things you do for me. Like you constantly doing stuff. Whether it's taking my car to get oil change, bring me something random home from the grocery store. The fact that you'll be like about to go play basketball and you'll be like, oh, you want to come when you get done? Mm -hmm. Like most people don't want to spend extra time with their person. What negative thing that I've done or said that you have a hard time forgetting? Mm. Truly, I'm really not a sensitive ass bitch like that. So really okay. nothing. Based on what you tell your friends about me, how would they describe me? He irritating as fuck. Mm. Proceed. He's funny as hell though. He my best friend. Mm. You think you're smart or dumb? Smart. All right, on a scale of one through ten, how smart are you? Ten. You a ten? Yeah. I would like to see it. Let's say me and you, we married, right? Uh, and we got seven sons. Okay. Each of our sons got a sister. How many people are in our family? Uh, eight. Oops. <laughs> what? Well, eight, yeah, eight because it's one daughter, right? You get eight. Oh, each son got a sister? Yeah. So, 14. Yo, stop playing with me. Drop your answer in the, in the comments, man. How many? How do you spell limb? Like, limb. How do you spell that? L-I-M-B. How do you put a C in front of that? What does that spell? Sim? <laughs> what? What? No, no, stop. What? What? Sam? All right, that was TikTok conspiracy, crazy gender. I told y'all it was going to be a lot in this video, man. Y'all let me know in the comments. I'm going through the comments on this video. Make sure you share this video with any of your friends. I don't care who it is, your mama, your daddy. 
any woman you know any woman you think is a whoever you want to share with any man you know just share this video man i want to see the comments on this one right here also go through my playlist man have, have a blast sit back and enjoy yourself it's a lot of stuff that's gonna blow your mind but this video right here was crazy till next time self-love and positivity fire squad i got you when you know it hey Whew.